Encouragement for equals. How to soar over the circumstances in life. The way we do that is by turning to God, having a hunger for Him, seeking Him in His Word, learning the truths that are revealed there. And today, for just a few moments, I want to do that from the book of Exodus, if you will. Exodus chapter 33. Exodus chapter 33. So if you will turn there, I'm going to be reading some scripture in just a moment. Exodus 33. Are you searching for God? Do you want to see more of God than you've ever seen before? That's what Moses asked for. But let me set the backstage for you before I even begin. The backdrop very simply is that Moses comes down from the mountain after receiving instructions from God, and he discovers that the people are in a worship, worship to the golden calf made by Aaron, and the people have walked away from God. And then God says, Moses, one of the things that he says to him, among many others, is that my presence will not be with you. My presence will not be with you. Now, Moses began to cry out. Listen to what he says. Then he said to him, if you're pre in, in Exodus 33, verse 15, then he said to him, if your presence does not go with us, do not lead us up from here. Don't let me move one, one bit, God, without your presence. For how can it uh, be known that I have found favor in your sight, I and your people. Is it not by your going with us so that we, I and your people, may be distinguished from all the other people who are on the face of the earth? The Lord said to Moses, I will do this thing of which you have spoken, for you have found favor in my sight, and I have known you by name. Then Moses said, I pray that you'll show me your glory. And he said, God said to Moses, I myself will make all of my goodness pass before you and will proclaim the name of the Lord before you. And I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious. And I will show compassion on whom I will show compassion. But he said, you cannot see my face for no man can see me and live. Then the Lord said, behold, there is a place by me and you shall stand there on the rock. And it will come about that while my glory is passing by, that I will put you in the cleft of the rock and cover you with my hand until I have passed by. Then I will take my hand away and you shall see my back, but my face shall not be seen. Well, God's face has been seen for us as believers, the new covenant uh, believers in the New Testament, and that is the face of Jesus. Jesus said, if you've seen God, you've seen me. But what I want us to look at tonight very simply is some truths from this. And what is it that Moses has said? He said, let me see your face. God said, no, I'll show you my back. Why? Because I'm holy. And God revealing himself in his utter holiness without man being covered by God's grace would mean his absolute destruction. And so God is being gracious here when he says, I'll show you my back. But I want you to look at something in the life of Moses. Moses has a hunger for God. It may be right now that you're hungering more than you have been in a long time or maybe forever since you've come to Christ. For God. No one else will do. It doesn't matter to the people you know. It doesn't matter about anything other than God. I just need you. I need to see you. And we have the hunger of Moses expressed here. He said, Lord, don't, I can't leave these people. They're your people. They're not my people. You freed them from Egypt. And God, I pray that you, your presence, will lead us. What a request. God, you freed me from slavery. I ask you, God, I ask you, I beg you, God, your presence to lead me. Not only that, but for me to be able to see your face, to see more of you than I've ever seen before. Not only is there the hunger there that is expressed by Moses, but the holiness of God is also expressed. That's why he says what he does. In verse 20, but he said, you cannot see my face for no man can see me and live. Then the Lord said, behold, there is a place by me where you shall stand there on the rock. And it will come about that while my glory is passing by, 
that I will put you in the cleft of the rock and cover you with my hand until I have passed it. What a wonderful hymn came from this, uh, from this passage out of verse 22. The cleft of the rock. Then I will take my hand away and you shall see my back, but my face shall not be seen. So we have Moses here hungering for God and we as his people hunger for him to know and to see him more and know him better than we've ever known him. And he revealed himself through Jesus. So if you want to see more of God and know more of God, search the Bible, search the scriptures, search for Christ and he shows him. And then there's the holiness of God that we spoke of. And then there's the hiding of grace. He said, I'll hide you here. Come, I'm going to place you in the cleft of the rock and I'm going to cover you there with my hand. And that's exactly what God has done for us. He placed us in Jesus, the rock, the cornerstone, if you will. And the rock of ages was cleft for us in order that we might be able to stand in the presence of God. I stop and think about the first Adam. In the first Adam, the bride was taken from his side to come out. But the New Testament bride, his side, the second Adam, was opened up in order that the bride might go in and have full access to God. What a wonderful truth. Let me share a couple of other things today that I hope that will encourage you from this passage. The difference in our lives is we ought to be distinguished from other people and from the way they live their lives by God's presence in our lives. That's what Moses said when he said, I and your people, in order, would your presence be with us in order that I and your people might be distinguished from all of the other people who are upon the face of the earth? Do you want to make a difference for God? Well, be distinguished from the rest of the people. It means taking a stand. It means standing in faith. It means standing in God's grace, remembering the grace that he's giving you today. And so, do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God. Stay in the presence of God, and you'll be different. I'll be different. We will be different people. And we will be known as people of God. You see, Christ has shown his face, as I said. In fact, that's exactly what he said in John 1.18. Let me read a verse there to you, if I might. John 1.18. Turn there. We'll look together into the Word of God for just a moment. John 1.18. It's a verse that we overlook many times. It's been read many times. It's familiar to our ears. But is it familiar in reality to our heart? In John 1, 19, Jesus said, No one has seen God at any time. The only begotten God, that's Jesus, the Son of God, the only begotten Son of God, the only begotten God who is in the bosom of the Father, He has explained, He has exegeted, He has revealed Him is the idea there. But there's something I want to call attention to, and that is the word bosom, in the bosom of the Father. You see, what that means is it is the idea of a garment, such as a coat. The people see the outside of the coat, but then you take the lapel and you open it up, and then you see the inside, all of the coat. And that's the way it is with Jesus. The Bible is saying here that he has revealed all that there is of God what a wonderful truth. And so God has made himself available to us so that we can know him today. In the request of Moses, he had a great desire, a great desire to see God, to see his presence. Now, the response of God was, okay, I'm going to give you my grace because my grace is required for you to be able to see me, to understand me, to know me. And when I do, and when you recognize this truth, then you will be distinguished from all of the other people on the face of the earth. So you want to be different today? Know more about God. Come to know him personally. Seek him. Ask the Spirit. Say to God, God, I, I just want to know you better. I want to know you better. And God's saying, that's what I've been waiting on, and I will show you. 
and get into the Word, and He'll open it up. So, encouragement for eagles. It comes by being in the Word of God and recognizing His grace for us and to us. And it came through Jesus. So be encouraged today as you go further and be different today by the presence of God being in your life and the knowledge of God being in you in fullness. May God bless you.